Hey everybody, good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Edgy Stream Live Show. Glad to be here. We will be here for the next hour talking about IHSA football. And yep, can you believe it? Single digits until kickoff in the spring of 2021. It seemed like it's been nine years since the last time we've played IHSA football. And but before you know it, it's going to be upon us. Um, very happy and excited to bring in. The head coach of Lincoln Way West this evening, Luke Lokank, and uh, of course the one and only Coach Joe joining us as well. And Luke, first of all, I appreciate you taking time to join us, and uh, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Anytime. Um, before we went live, and you missed the Edgy Temp QVC show. Um, <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about IHSA officially released the schedules today, and. Luke, we'll get in. We'll we'll break down your team a little bit and go into your schedule. But uh, one thing, Joe and Luke, that's been pretty evident so far looking at the schedules is number one, a lot of teams that play on grass for the most part won't be playing on grass this spring. Uh, I notice across the state schools that are going to be playing home games away from their home field if they're on grass. If it, I think it, it seems like if they could possibly help it, they're doing it, which I think is smart. Um, a lot of early Saturday games in particular, Joe, which we talked about schools yep. playing that weather card and, and, you know, trying to, trying to be a little proactive with that. So we'll see how that plans out. And, uh, just a lot of, uh, a lot of strange days and times. And it's, it's interesting coach to say the least, Joe. Yeah. You know, with the times and the, and <clears throat> playing in the afternoon, that, that brings me back to when there was playoff football where you play your Friday night games. Yep. And I know there was quite a few teams that would play Friday nights, but after that first week, they tend to go Saturday afternoons because that was the warmest part of the day. They didn't want to take a chance on playing in 30 degree weather on a Friday night with the wind howling and stuff and to take a chance on playing on Saturday afternoon. So I, I think it's a, it, as far as that is concerned, I think it's a good call. And the second one, as you mentioned, the teams without turf, uh, that's a very smart on their part because the weather that we've had, we're supposed to get a little rain today or tonight or tomorrow, or whatever. And you got to, you got to watch out for that too. But, uh, fortunately for us around here, other than cold city and Wilmington, yeah, we're all pretty well, all, all turf. So I think these guys are raring to go. Yeah. And I know the guy in the bottom box there is raring to go and, and Luke, um, How's practice gone so far? And, and and I cannot imagine just the first couple of days out there, how excited your coaches and your players have been. Yeah, you can tell there's a dip, different hop in their step, you know, uh, especially for our seniors, you know, because you, you, you talk about, you know, you play every down like it's your last, you know, that's kind of coach talk. And these seniors had that happen to them. You know, a lot of them thought they were never going to play again. And, you know, they get a season. So there's a little extra hop. You know, we noticed that. Coaches are excited to be out there. You know, about every coach on the staff has come up to me and said, man, it feels good to be back. You know what I mean? So it's been very exciting. Luke, the, the, your, your coaching staff, uh, is it pretty much the same? Or did you switch people around being the head coach now? Yeah, a lot of the same guys. Um brought in a couple new faces that were with us previous in previous years. Um, then there was two or three guys we brought over um, from around the district. And, uh, but a lot of the same faces, you know, a few, a few new ones. And you were, you were a defensive guy, defensive coordinator. Are you still in that, that mode still, or are you going to the offensive side of the ball? Um, no, I'm still defensive, defensive mode. For sure, um, spend a lot more time now as head coach. You know, um, being on that side of the ball during practice and you know in meetings and, and things like that. Okay. Look, look, how difficult was? I mean, God, I can only imagine how difficult the whole pandemic's been. But as far as and and I'm sure being a young coach, you probably had a dozen different plans during all this and had to rip them up and start over. Um, how frustrating was that? And, you know, just in the fact that you were trying to get the jump on something that no one was able to get the jump on anything. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. The first, last 15 months have been crazy, crazy for everybody. But if you look at it as a football standpoint, um, yeah, a lot of calendars are made, you know, a lot of calendars are ripped up, you know, um, communication around the league and around our district with head coaches have been uh, tremendous us trying to stay on the same page. Hey, what's working? What are you doing? Hey, um, in this next phase, how can we adjust? Things like that. But it has been all over the board for sure. When when the kids reported back, and I know everyone's school situation was different versus being all remote versus hybrid versus everything else, um, how were you able to – First of all, keep your kids kind of invested and involved during a lockout because I mean, let's face it, they you had it at one point you had very limited, if any, access with your kids at all. Um, they're away from you, which God only knows what they were doing, if they were working out at all, if they were doing anything. Um, did you have a program that you guys put in place as far as kind of workouts that you wanted them to do? And then once they did, were able actually to come back and get into a weight room. I mean, did you see some kids that maybe had the pandemic 15, not necessarily a good 15, uh, not the coaches, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. But the, but the kids, um, I mean, how did all that shake out for you and your kids in the program? Yeah, you know, the lockout, you know, it was it was um, different for each kid. You know, every kid, you know, ha has different things that they have access to um, when it comes from, from outside the building. Uh, but we had a plan for each e each kid to give them a chance to, um, you know, work out or what you have at home or what you don't have at home. We had different plans. And, you know, we, we just kept communicating with the kids, you know, about once a week. You know, this is where we're at. This is where we should be. Um, if there was an update, you know, I would give them an update. Um, but about that once a week communication I would make. But the kids were always you know, texting or emailing, Hey, can we do this? Can we look at this? You know, so it was, it was good. It was really good. And we were blessed with our kids. And I'm sure a lot of kids around the area, you know, they worked hard. We, we saw gains out of some kids, you know? Um, yeah. You've had, you have some kids that, you know, probably didn't take it as serious, but we had a lot of gains and we were very pleased with how um, they reacted to the lockout. Yeah, I, I tried like heck to keep Joe away from the uh, pandemic 15, Joe. I don't know. How'd I do? <laughs> you did very well. Hey, listen, I got my second shot on Friday. I'm, yeah, I'm all set to go. There you go. There you go. Um, so as far as your team's concerned, I mean, you know, you're 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 taking over a group and, you know, a, a pretty experienced group from what I remember, Coach. I think, what, about six starters on offense, six on defense? And, you know, we talked about the seniors and fill us in, talk about some of those seniors. And, and I know some of them have made college plans. Some of them are maybe still looking. So give us an update on kids on both sides of the ball and, and especially the seniors and what they've got going on. Yeah, we have a good mix, mixed group coming in, um, returning starters, non-starters, um, you know, juniors with a lot of um, playing experience on the varsity level. Uh, last year we played, you know, um, five five sophomores okay throughout the varsity season last year. Um, Evan Waterjuski was quarterback. He's a senior. He came in after week three uh, last season when uh, Brody Say got hurt. You know, so we have some pretty good experience. Um, senior senior leaders on you know offensive line is Nick Hillbrand, Zach Gowdy. Zach Gowdy's committed to uh, Southern Missouri. Uh, University Division II school in Joplin. Um, we have on the defense, senior leaders on the defense, you know, defense lines, Justin Cronk, uh, Carter Harris, they both got playing time last year. Daniel White will be the Mike linebacker experience last year. We had a lot of experience in the defensive backfield. Uh, Cole Horvath was our leader at free safety. So we have had a lot of good senior leadership, but the junior leadership is right behind them because they have so much experience. Joe, you get the uh, fashion award tonight from Nate Turner. Thanks, Nate. I wore this for you, Nate. I'm telling you right now. The nice hat, Joe. The red is hot. So there you go, Joe. Congratulations. <laughs> Although I'm not going to lie, I kind of like Luke's uh, Leak Away West all yeah, white. Nice, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of icy. Kind of like that. And yeah. God, it's scary. I just said icy. 
So um, I want to talk about a young guy uh, that, that I've had a chance to get to know a little bit on your team. Uh, and I know he's drawn some uh, college attention. Talk to me a little bit about uh, Eric Novak, Novak and what he brings. Yeah, er- Eric, um, I've known him since he's been a little – a little kid, and uh, he played as a sophomore for us. He played a, a bandit safety. Um, gr- great player, great kid. Um, this year, he'll be he'll be touching the ball a little bit this year and playing a little bit of D. Um, you know, he, his recruiting has gone up. You know, last couple months, which has been great. I think he holds a Indiana State offer, and you know. A lot, Plenty and plenty of interest from the Missouri Valley, the MAC, you know, and um, FBS schools. You know, it'll be exciting to see him play these uh, next six weeks. Um, when we talk about the recruiting process, Joe, and I, I know you've got another one for Coach. Um, when we talk about your kids that have committed and, and kids that haven't, um, I, it, it the pandemic is horrible, especially for recruiting in those seniors. I mean, it's been – it's been rough. And, you know, you being a younger coach, I know you're, you're blessed. You've got some veteran guys on your staff and I got to imagine you probably reached out to anyone and everyone that could maybe try to help place your kids during all this. Yeah. Uh, the connections I've made, um, you know, the last 15 years as assistant, you know, through recruiting and helping Dave with it the last 10 years and just connections I have with, you know, friends who are in the, the college business of, of football and, you know, just reaching out to everybody you can and, you, you know, got to find the kids that want to play, then let's find you a place to play. And um, it was a lot of phone calls, a lot of messages. And that's what, that, was, that was the lockout for me, you know, a lot of it. Yeah. When we, th- when we talk to the, to some of the coaches or all the coaches, we've asked them, you know, with football basically being plopped in, plopped into a schedule, you know, before basketball, before baseball or whatever. Have you had any kids opt out, Luke, by any chance? No. um, My big thing was to end with the basketball program and the baseball program. We need to sit down. We need to communicate with these kids um, before the season start, you know, the plan we have for them. You know, Lincoln Way West has uh, been pretty good the last 10 years because, you know, our best players have been two sport athletes, three sport athletes, and we need to figure out a way to uh, make it all work. Um, if it's adjusting our schedules, you know, when the, the seasons overlap, you know, uh, especially with freshmen, sophomores, because you never want anyone to choose. And you, you just need to we wanted to communicate with them and say we have a plan. We're we're in this together um, between the sports and we will make it work because we need you to stay in all sports. Um, it, it's funny you mentioned Lincoln Way West and how you've been able to make it work. Um, and, and you're right. It's been, I, I think Joe, and you, you can probably attest to this as well. I think it's been really refreshing to see all the cooperation that's gone on. I mean, I've talked to kids all over the state and they just, they're just talking about how, you know, well, you know, coach is let me do this. And, and, you know, in the morning I'm with football and then in the afternoon and the evening I got basketball and I, I think it's great. And, and maybe tying into that a little bit, Luke, I mean, how the heck does Lincoln way do it? I mean, it's your program, your school opens up and I know Dave was there and, and you guys hit the ground running and just, it's like, you didn't skip a beat. And it, I hate to tell everyone this outside the Lincoln way district, it usually doesn't work that way with new schools when they first open. You know, it it takes a decade or so to like settle in and and build up. But Lincoln Way from the get go just is winning in playoff teams and in all sports. I mean, there's no athletic drop off at all. Is it that area? Is it a combination of things, Luke? What is it about about Lincoln Way and the success with all the schools and all the programs? Well, we live in a great area, you know. Um, Great kids, great families, you know, uh, great support, you know, from town level to district level to, you know, um, for all three schools. You know, that's the big thing. And um, it, it was it was a you know, last 10 years have been a blast. You know, um, when I came over with Dave, when he was named head coach the first year, the first year we were together and you know, we started off um, 
I don't know, we were like two and four. I think we started off then we went on the run all the way up to JCA overtime game. And um, that was great that first year because then we could set that standard. You know, you didn't have to work towards that standard. Now the standard is, okay, we need to play in November on Saturdays. You know, that's our standard. And it all starts with, you know, the community and, and the, the where these kids grew up, a lot of support, um, you know, just great kids, great families. Yeah. Uh, Coach, we got a question for you. Kip Walters, question for Coach Lokank. What is the team motto this year? Is it any different than years past? No. Oh. Um, you know, team model this year would, you know, just like any year, you know, this year's a little bit different. We always try to shoot to be at your best week nine, you know what I mean? And getting into the playoffs, you know, that's when you want to start playing good. You know, being, being consistent, I think is the big thing this year. Okay. Be consistent in your six games. Hey, you have a little bit in and get good at it, you know, and we're kind of preaching those to the kids, you know, you know, every day, you know, we're not going to stay the same. Just take one step forward, get a little bit better, and um, good things will come from that. And, again, Kip, thanks for the question. We appreciate thanks, it. If you've got questions, uh, again, just feel free to chime in, and who knows, we might just use the questions. So, uh, Coach, looking at the schedule, as I mentioned, the IHSA, in case you didn't realize this, the IHSA released the master schedule today. Um you open up on the road at Andrew uh, to start. Then, of course, you're at Lincoln Way Central in week two, hosting uh, Stag in week three. On the road at HF, hosting Bradley, and oh, yeah, to finish the year home against Lincoln Way East. Nice crossovers there, pal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> HF and East. Very nice. You, you've got some friends in the uh, in the conference scheduling office, I see. Yeah, no, it's a uh, it's good schedule. You know, it's a good schedule. Um, you know, it sets up nice for us. You know, your triple option team first first week out is is not everything you want to see. But, uh, you know, Coach Lewandowski at Andrews, they're doing a great job, and it should be a, a great first um, test for us. Yep. Joe? Look, you know, you, we, we talked about the schedule, and, and, it's, and it is a good one. And you've got six games. And I know you want to try to win as many as you can, but what is the ultimate goal for you as far as what you want to do with these six games and to carry it over into next summer? Yeah, that's a great question because you got to think at the end of these six weeks, um, you know, summer's around the corner. You know, yep. you, you know, I'm sure a lot of the summer camps would be pushed to, to, to July, but that's only two months, two months out. You know, so, um, you know, winning, you know, is the biggest thing. We all know that. That's what we're in it for. Um, but, you know, getting – Great experience for the seniors, you know, then getting your juniors, okay, and maybe some sophomores. All right, hey, your varsity players come in two months, you know, or you might be a varsity starter here in two months. Getting some uh, plenty of experience for them is a, is a goal for us too. Um, as far as those underclassmen, um, we've talked about this with other coaches. Um, I'm sure a lot of time, a lot of effort has been spent by your assistants just trying to get that end of it all together. And and how did that go? And 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 was it a challenge in particular for the freshman level, Lou, keeping them and, and getting them out when you had all this downtime? Yeah. Um, you know, our, our staff's done an unbelievable job. You know, we, we went in this uh, and the goal was let's try not to let's try not to lose anyone. Okay, uh, be you know easy for one or two kids to walk away. Let's try not to to lose anyone. And um, you know, I know if you speak for our freshman level on up, you know, the numbers did not change from what we we're expecting in August, you know, to to now, which is is great. And it was great that our staff was able to do that. You know, on all on all three levels, you know, there wasn't much. There's one or two. I um, mean, the whole program, and, and they, were, they were seniors. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, well, we got about 40 minutes left. If you have Coach Joe's stories. <laughs> he probably does. We're here. I one I can share. Sure. <laughs> one that I can share. Sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think it was um, my senior year in high school, and uh, Coach Rod was a baseball coach, and I think it was Dean at that time or not Dean at that time. Uh, I, I – 
I came late to high school, I think once. And, um, you know, I don't know, car trouble or something was going on. And I didn't think that deserved the detention, but I guess it did. And on detention Saturday, it seemed like I was the only one out on the baseball field picking weeds up the baseball field. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way that already deserved this detention. You know, yeah, Joe. That's probably – and that came right from Coach Rott. Well, you know, because Luke Lee was such a good worker, I needed somebody that I could depend on out on the baseball field to pick weeds. And this is the guys – I Luke will say this is the truth. They used to be get there about 5 to 8 because it was for 8 to 10, the detention on Saturday. And when they saw – when guys saw me walk in, they everybody just put their heads down because they did not want Coach Rod to be picking them. Okay, let's go. We're going up to the baseball field. Grab a couple bags. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe, that'd probably be a lawsuit or a, a complaint. Well, yeah, yeah, well, you know, sure. hey, they, they did a great job. <laughs> they did a great job. Oh, uh, okay. Well, any other good ones? Even ones you can't tell. No one's around. <laughs> uh, that one always stuck out to me. That was, that was, uh, I was a dean. I was a dean um, for like twelve years in the district here, and I always thought about that. You know, when I was standing there, I attention in the classroom. I always thought about. My attention. Well, well, now with all the turf fields on football fields, you can't go take a pick and yeah. let's, go, let's go pick some turf today. <laughs> and, and let's face it, Joe's 51 days from retirement. So that's right. It doesn't matter. We'll take it easy on him. So. <laughs> we'll the it. old guy. All the right. One guy. more for you, coach. And, and I don't know. If, I don't know if these are people. I'm going to assume they're probably friends of yours. So I'll throw this one out here. Do your kids have a biggest heart as you? <laughs> From Mike Sawyer. Yeah, you know, we have great kids. Like I said that earlier, um, you know, our kids, you ask them to do something and they're going to do it. And um, that's, you know, the, the blessing that, you know, I've received when I became the head coach here. And, you know, I, I can speak for all three schools. You know, our kids will work. And um, you know, that's why we've been successful at all three. And, um, you know, they will do anything for you. So, yeah. Yep, no doubt. Well, my friend, I appreciate you taking time. I know it's busy. I know you, you know, we're again, we're under 10 days from kickoff. And as always, um, I'm sure we'll talk to you a little bit down the road once we get the season going here. And uh just best of luck, man. Go get them. Yeah, good luck, Luke. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. All right. Luke Lokank joining us. And again, we uh, appreciate him stopping by, Joe. And so yeah, he went easy on you. <laughs> Yeah, there's probably some stories that he could maybe that's for edgy at night. You know, that's yeah. Well, those are the ones that are after pigskin preview for a couple hours. Yeah, I'm gonna well, have there's, to some kids you can tell, there's some kids that could tell you some stories when I made yeah. that for I'm sure. Gonna, we're gonna have to launch that one pretty soon, I think. Well, like yeah. I always said, when I coach football, I, I made them do some things that I'm not ha happy about. That I should, if I did it today, I'd be in jail. I mean. <laughs> The, 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 different times, the, the, different the, times. Running with sled bags and you name it. If they got in trouble at school and a teacher came up to me, oh, yeah. they paid for it. No doubt. No doubt. All right. So we have some news. First of all, and a sad and I wanted to mention, um, it was very unfortunate. But the other day I learned that uh, Larry Kane, longtime photographer from the Joliet Herald News, really? uh, had passed away. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Just, I don't know if you knew Larry very well, Joe, but you, you know everybody in this area, so I'm sure you did. Yes, I but, did. Uh, Larry, just a terrific guy. I'd see him all the time at different events. He used to shoot the jackhammers and then the slammers quite a bit. So I, for some reason, I always run into him there, and it was nice because he wasn't working at the same time I was. So I'd be able to talk to him a little bit more there. And, and, and just a really nice man and you know, really great photographer and just, just someone you'd see and, and just always a very, very friendly guy and always had a good thing to say. So I was, I was very, very disappointed to see that. So. Yeah, that, that, uh, that, that makes me kind of sad because he was, he was a tremendous guy. And as you said, when he come out, I mean, he would shoot thousands of photos yeah. and only one or two would get in the Herald news. Yep. And one day I, you know, he asked me, he came up to me after a game and he says, coach, he says, I took all these, and it was all digital, you know, still. He would send me yeah. the disc with all the pictures for nothing. Yeah. He would just send it to me. Yeah. And I always wanted to give him something. He would never take anything for it. Uh, 
he said he would never get in trouble because you know he he would just give them to me and, and right that, that makes me sad. He was a he I I'm I'm sorry I missed that. And he was a pro. He, he was a pro. He was. great he, photographer and a great he, guy and he was just a yeah. good guy altogether. No doubt. Uh, some other things to cover. Very important news regarding pigskin preview. Yes. Starting. By the way, we start a week from tonight, and I'll, I'll clarify that. We are moving the show from Thursday night to Wednesday night for this coming spring season. Uh, as we talked about earlier, a lot of the schedules came out today. A lot of Thursday games are on the state, Joe, for various reasons, whether it's referee or field issues or what have you. So the schedule's kind of expanded out. There's a lot of Saturday games. There's a lot of Thursday games. So we're going to move Pigskin back from Thursday to Wednesday. That way we can, I can get out and go cover some games that I normally wouldn't get to on a, uh, on a, on a Thursday night because I'd be stuck with you knuckleheads in the studio for two hours. So that's right. Um, yeah. So I can, uh, I can go out and do that. And so we will be coming to you a week from Wednesday. We will be on 1340 WJOL and Joliet. I'm hoping we can do this as well simultaneously going to work on that i will let everybody know via my message board how that is progressing or not progressing if we're not able to get it done but uh one way or the other joe a week from uh a week from today we will be back on 1340 wj well thanks to kevin malloy and john wright and pizza mia i know those are the three main sponsors for now and uh we're back yes they're gonna let us on for another year it's amazing i, I don't know i don't know I don't know how, but we are. <laughs> so again, it's uh, it's a unique situation, a unique season with just six games, but uh, we're going to cover it. We'll be there every week. I know WJOL is putting their schedule together, so they are going to cover games as well. So we'll uh, have certainly more details coming your way. Um, another thing, Joe, we need to talk about besides the IHSA schedules coming out is that IHSA and the uh, Illinois Department of Public Health announced that they are going to allow 20% of capacity to attend yes. outdoor mm. events. So I guess that's a positive. I, I think so. And from what I've gathered, unless somebody out there that's listening to us, uh, <clears throat> they're just allowing, <clears throat> excuse me, the parents of the home, the home, it's going to only be a home type thing. They're not letting any visitors yeah. in. Yeah. And that, it seems uh, to be what I've heard. I don't know if that's a, uh, I don't know if that is a, a hard, fast rule. I'd, I'd have to double check, but I already know that the moment that came out, there were people bitching and moaning <laughs> about, <laughs> about, you know, screw it, screwing the, the visitor fans and what have you. And I mean, you know, I guess Joe, but at this stage, just the fact that they're, you're playing, I totally agree with you, but I can see the school aspect of it too, by making yeah. sure they know the people that are there. I know at the basketball games at Lamont, people sign in, and they only only allow certain, so they know who's there in case something does happen. They can trace it out. I mean, I mean, I go, I go back to the, to the point of if, okay, if you can have twenty percent, then why don't you just give the visiting team parents tickets? And you let your parents in and be done with it. I, mean, I, I, I can see that. I know at Lamont, I think 20% of a visiting team on the visiting side, uh, they could get socially distanced. There's not many stands. It doesn't go up very high at Lamont. No, but they uh, could, could stand all the way up and down the sideline. Yeah, they could. They, they so, could. So what what would what would 20% at Lamont be? Boy. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure John Young and Eric Michelson—they're all out there with. I'm not a math major. But I would, yeah, I would what? say two fifty. I don't know. know. But look at the stadium. Twenty percent of the stadium could probably be about thousand, maybe. I'd say I'd, well, I'd I guess it's twenty five hundred. It's, it's well, yeah, I was going to say it, it's roughly what ten thousand. I think I've seen yeah. an estimate. At times, so that's two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. That's decent. Yeah, I mean, everybody's going to be wearing masks. I mean, it's plus the fact if it's cold, that mask is going to keep your face warm. That that's for sure. That's true. I won't be able to see anything for like six weeks, but <laughs> with glasses and a mask. Oh God, yes. Can I get oh, like wipers? 
Fox, you'll be like Andy Reid that first week. I don't even know how he saw that first I, week. I still don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going I'm to roll with a mask and see what happens week one. <laughs> Uh, so, well, I'm sure there's going to be mass policemen out there, believe me. So be prepared to hear me bitch, Joe. <laughs> oh, no, you never do that, though. <laughs> hey, my question is, you know, with the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and I'm sure it has to deal with officials. Right. That's part is of anybody, it. Is anybody with a grass field that you know of is asking another school that they could play on their field, let's say on a Friday morning at noon or Friday at 11 o'clock? Yeah, but, I, I think – there's been some instances like like Richards and Shepard are in the process of, of going to be getting turf. Eisenhower just got it. They got it last year. So I know I know Richards is playing well, – I think they had three home games in this. One of them at – is it going to be at Eisenhower – so, so there's situations like that where they're they're not playing at home because of that fact, and you know, like like we talked about last week, the NUIC, that small conference right. up in uh, up near the Rockford area, um, a lot of those schools are playing at Rockford public school facilities because they have turf. Freeport's hosting a bunch of games. Uh, I did a video with uh, Bobby Moynihan from Harlem. Harlem's hosting a bunch of different games, so. That's that's the main reason you've got all these different days and times is just because I mean week one. Now again, this is Crete. Now Crete plays on grass. Right. They're playing Thornwood at nine o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Wow. Guess where I'll be? Yeah, having coffee over at Crete. Yep. <laughs> donut probably probably with John Konecki having a donut and a little coffee and getting ready for nine a.m. varsity football. You know, I was talking to Brett today and. Um, you know, they're, they're playing Shepard next week, and they're playing at Shepard. He told me that after that game, Shepard's not playing at home anymore. Yeah. Uh, they're going to start their construction on the football field right after that game. So yep. uh, yep. they're going to do one game in, they're going to destroy the field, and then they're going to just put the uh, start the turf situation there. Yeah, so so you've got some interesting situations like that. And, and, and again, Nate chiming in with the, with the public league, zero people in the stands, mm -hmm. zero. It's unfortunate, Nate, but that, you know, and, and that's surprising just in the fact that Joe, they literally just came out, what, two days ago and announced Sox and Cubs are going to be able to have, what, 20%? Yeah. So, yeah, that, 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 I don't know. that's sad. As everyone in the public league and Nate could tell you, they've been very, very slow on the uptick with the public league during all this. So hopefully, hopefully someone will – wake someone up and and maybe they can push things along here a little bit. And, and again, the, the public league's already down to a five game season. They are not playing week right. one. Right. So they're already down to five games. Um, so we'll see what happens. It's tough. There's no doubt. It's, it's a, it's a rough situation for sure for a lot of different schools across the state. Um, one thing we need to start getting into, and obviously we'll be doing this a lot starting next Wednesday on 1340 WJ wall. Um, I have to come up with a big five. <laughs> so, uh Oh, so let's, let's focus. And again, we realize there's people watching from all over, but a lot of what we do with Joe is certainly the WJ wall, Will County area. Um, top of your head. Some of the schools, you th you throw is, is top, and I mean we'll start with Lincoln Way East. That's right. that simple. That's a given, right? I'm I mean, gonna at this say, point, I'm going to say Lockport will be one of the top five. See, it's funny because I just did. By the way, uh, go to the Edgy Nation side. I just put out like nine conference previews in the last two days with video. Uh, that's going to be coming hot and heavy for the next seven or eight days. We're going to have a ton of polls coming out over the next three, four days. Just throwing a bunch of crap at you, Joe. So right. um, one that I just recently did was the Southwest Suburban Blue, as you mentioned, with Lockport. Lockport's a very popular pick as a sleeper. And I tend to agree, Joe, but there's only three things that concern me about that pick. You know what they are? Lincoln Way East, Bolingbrook, and – in HF, yes. Those are not those are three 
teams that are not easy to just shove out of the way. Right. That is, I agree. That is going to be a challenge. And I think, and we talked about this before, I think, you know, Lockport opens, I believe, at HF. So that's a huge week one game. Then I believe, hang on, I'll pull up their schedule. I, I want to think it's a stag or someone. And then week three, their host, I think they're at Bolingbrook. So I think that week three game is going to tell us a lot. Now, I don't necessarily think that even if Lockport winds up, say, fourth, it's going to be a terrible thing for them because what what I, th- I think out of all those teams, Joe – they're the ones that are going to benefit most from the spring six games. Yes. And I think they can wind, because of that, they'd wind up being an absolute monster in the fall. Yeah. So here's Lockport's schedule. They're at home with Flossmore. Then they host Sandberg. Excuse me. Sandberg, very solid. Yep. At Bolingbrook. And then hosting Lincoln Way East. And then they finish with Andrew and Stagg. So, you know, there's a lot to like about Ernie's team, as we've talked about. He's got experience back. He's got a six foot six quarterback junior that could wind up being a really good player if things go well. It, it's just Bolingbrook and HF and yeah, <laughs> and East are not pushovers. I mean, and, and again, and that they've been the class of that conference since they merged together. You know, John Ivel lost a handful of kids. Uh, the Walters kid graduated early. He's at Notre Dame right now. Um, there were two or three other kids that I know transferred out, went out of state. And played football in the fall. I don't believe any of those kids will be back. Um, but John still has talent. I mean, he's got Vinny. Vinny Meshi is his quarterback who signed to Grand Valley State. He's a Division II level quarterback. Uh, he, he's gonna, he could have a breakout year this year. There's all kinds of young talent still. He's still got Tyler McLaurin running that running that defense at linebacker. So. Bolingbroke's not going to be a pushover. And then HF with Sean Allen back, and all, this is Buzz's last year, so, you know, they're going to be fired up. When has HF ever been light, light on talent, Joe? When? Yeah, I, I can't. No, never. 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 And then East is literally like a hockey team. They they switch lines every year. Exactly. You bring a new line of talent in, yep. put the second line in for the first line, and go. And that's yep. what they do. So. I, I like Lockport, but I'm just going to say this: this is not going to come easy. Yes, um, you're going to beat Lincoln Way East out of any of these six games. It's the first game. Yeah, because I, I remember know. talking to you after I went I to school, their, their first game last year. I go, well, I don't know, and then we did the Naperville Central Lincoln Way East game, Dewey and I, and yep. I called you on the way home from Naperville. I said, "Don't worry about Lincoln Way East; they're going to be fine." We <laughs> did say that. That was like <laughs> the first be fine. Game. Oh, no, they're fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Whatever I said last week, forget about it. Um, so you're right, though. And and Bolingbrook opens with them. So yep. we'll learn a lot about both teams very quickly. Yes. Um, I mean, some others. Jolie Catholic. Yeah. A lot of talent there, pal. I mean, a lot of talent coming back. Yep. Yep. I know. Uh, they even lost the quarterback. And the, the, they lost some of the linemen, I believe. But, again, it's just – they just do such well, a good got, You got was it Aiden Voss back at quarterback? You've got Jordan Anderson at, at, at a wing back. You've got, I mean, you've got talent up and down that roster. A lot of good young talent. Right. They're going to be very tough. And I tell you what, JCA's first two games are really good. JCA opens, I believe, St. Lawrence. And then I know, I know for a fact, week two is um, Fenwick. Okay. Uh, Jolie Catholic, yeah, at St. Lawrence and then at Fenwick. So on the road the first two weeks. And honestly, Joe, those are, those are the two toughest games, the six-game schedule of the first two weeks. Right. So um, I think JCA could be very good. What about Providence? I, I We're going to have Cogs on next week for the first show. And we need to get into it with Cogs because, um, you know, there's some keys coming back. Um, I know Aaron Vaughn, the running back, is going to be a senior. I know he'll be back. Right. I believe Conway, the quarterback, will be back. I think. I think so t- I, I I believe so. I know uh, Jamison Gears, that committed to Minnesota, he is playing. He he did not graduate early, so he will play this spring. 
So, I mean, Providence has some talent. And then, again, you mentioned Lockport. Uh, what about the school that pays your check, Joe? What about Lamont? I think I Lamont's think got a chance. Pretty, I think there. they're going to be pretty good themselves. I, I really do. They yep. – quarterback wise, there's a couple quarterbacks I know that are cap very capable. And again, I don't know. I don't get into it, Brett, about that, but I'm sure he's going to use both of them and, and see which one plays out like he usually does. There's some good young talent at Lamont that yes, I've seen last year. So yes. yep. they're going to be fine. And then, and then out my way, uh, Manuka, yep. new coach, uh, Matt Harding takes over, finally gets his shot. And, uh, you know, again, uh, defensively, they're going to be a little bit young. Only a couple of starters back. Uh, two linebackers, Wingerter and, and and Mason Cave. But uh, offensively, there's some skills and some experience there. So I think Manuka can be in the mix. And then yeah, we'll always have – Foundation at Manuka – sorry to interrupt you, Edge. No, you're good. Foundation at Manuka has been set. And it's up to the next guys to, to keep that thing – to keep adding bricks to it. Um. Wilmington, Cole City. I mean, it goes on and on. And they're, the they're all good. They're and it's and again, it's tough. You know a little, a lot more than I. But again, it's been tough because of the pandemic, and we really don't know. Yeah. And that's why when we get the coaches, you know, on pigskin preview, I know we just talked to them a little bit. Now that they've seen their teams, and we talk to them starting next week, uh, we'll be able to dive into a little bit more and ask for specific names and things like that uh, where they're at. I've had a lot of coaches tell me that um, it's going to be interesting that first game because second half could be a battle of attrition, yep. meaning kids are just going to be gassed. Yep. You know, between the energy, the excitement, and then reality kicks in, um, you know, literally going to be who who's able to withstand and, and hold up enough in the second half of a lot of those games. So, um, you know, first games, as you all know, are generally sloppy. You can have some issues. So you've got that on top of 15 months of limited activity and then thrown into two weeks of practice here. Right. We'll see. Yeah. I, 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 it's going to be – it's going to be tough that first game. I even think even the second week, and then they'll get their, their gauge of their – their wind and in, in their physicality all set. And hopefully by week three, everybody raring to go. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. So, so we will see. Um, as far as other things going on, it, it's so weird that basketball is done already. <laughs> Our last game, I think was so tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. It's so weird. It's, it's, it's crazy. It, it's just, it does, doesn't seem real. You know what I mean? Yep. Have you noticed that? Have you had that feel for sports where it's a different feel for you? Well, for me, it is because I mean, I would go to basketball games. I, you know, right. the, we would, you and I would go to that. We'd go to games and stuff and, and see kids play that play football. Or just we'd watch the better talent. We know who they were, and I mean, Lamont, I think played about I think maybe eight home games, maybe. And again, I what I you can't go, and it's yeah. just, it's just tough. And you know, just talking to. To Rick, the head coach, and and uh, run us, and do he talks about kids. And if I don't have those particular kids in class, I don't really know who they are, because I usually see them yeah. on the basketball floor and know who they are and talk to them in the hallway during the day. But I've got a couple basketball players in in uh, one of my classes, and I talk to them about the game the previous night, who you're going to play, and things like that. So that's why I think it's so different. I, and and it's going to be a little weird for the football aspect too, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, doing the games on WJOL and bothering the coaches, you know, during the beginning of the week and asking for rosters and things like that and, and getting to know the kids again and, yeah. and uh, calling the game. So it, it, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be definitely interesting uh, as far as I'm concerned too. So it's going to be weird to go to like a Joliet Memorial or go to a Lincoln way East where you just know that okay, I got to get there really early because it's going to be packed. Yeah, and there's going to be nowhere to park, and and now it's just like like going to a freshman game almost, where you show up 15 minutes. Last few times I was at Lincoln Way East, at least three or four times. I got there at six o'clock and I was parking on the west side of the building, which is the complete opposite of the football field. 
I I go to my go to spot is the neighborhood just south of the high school. Right. That's where I generally will go park and walk and and then try to scamper across the street as best I can. Although it was that Colorado Avenue was almost like, it's almost it's almost like a highway now. So, but uh, that's why the Frankfurt police, um, you know, take radar on that. You got to be careful on that road. Yeah, it's not it's not a bad place to park though if you're looking for offshoot parking for Lincoln Way East. No, probably just gave that away, Joe. I could give I, I should write a guide to parking spots and, and, and best places to either eat or park near high schools. Well, I know one place that you, you, I know you don't want to park and you're going to tell people not to park underneath the oak trees where squirrels will drop. Oh God. That's it. Yeah. That's at uh, Glenbard West. Glenbard West. <laughs> Crazy ass squirrels. I remember you calling me one morning. Yeah, I'm... You could hear it. Hey, what's that sound? Oh, that's a squirrel dropping, uh, nuts oh, dropping, the dropping nuts out of the trees onto my car. <laughs> Goofy squirrels, but I do have a stellar parking spot over at Glenbard West, and I'll never share it. There's only one person in this world that knows the parking spot because he shared his special spot with me. And I shared mine with his at Kevin Schmidt, who wrote for still writes for the Daily Herald, yeah, but he's on the uh, Newsbeat now. Um, yeah, so Schmidt and I had extra special parking spots to go to, but uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> gonna be weird. It's going to be weird for sure. Um, looking forward, though, to uh, God just getting out and doing yeah. something other than sitting well, here. And I know Luke said that, you know, the, the coaching staff was excited and the kids yeah. just talking to the guys at, at school. They were very, very excited. Just And we had we've had great weather. I know it's going to change a little bit uh, starting yeah. tomorrow and Friday. But in the 40s, it's better than, you know, zero degrees out there or below. But uh, just the excitement, and you're right—the excitement, the adrenaline, and stuff—and and and, uh, and I'm glad to see the kids are excited. I know the kids at Lamont are, and I'm sure, like every other football player in our area is. And and uh, I'm actually looking forward to it too. All right, Joe, you ready? I'm ready. So it's gonna—it's not going to be as nice as it's been, and I don't think anyone should expect things to stay as nice as it's been the last. Listen, we come, on. come on, it can be yeah. 60 today and 20 tomorrow. So, so it will drop. Although, I don't know, here in lovely Shanahan, Illinois, you know, Thursday high of 58, 59 Friday, 55 Saturday, 48 Sunday, 43 Monday, 46 Tuesday, 49 Wednesday, 49 Thursday, 49 Friday. 53 Saturday. So, I mean, it's okay. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be cold and cold, real cold at night, but. What do you expect? 80 degrees? Come on. Playoff weather. <laughs> so, we know how to dress for the weather. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> That's for and, sure. and you up in your nice toasty booth with your heater. And your oh, well, yeah, I, I, know, I know my partner will have that heater. I know that. That's for sure. You guys are so spoiled with your little hot cocoa and. <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Really, what is it, Joliet West that gives you guys like a? Signal? Oh my God, the carts, Coach Karseski and those guys. Oh. They have a they have a buffet up there every time we're up there. I know. Never <laughs> been. I've been up there, but I've never had the buffet. It's amazing. Oh. Every time I've gone up there, oh, the guys that there, Karch isn't there. That's the one <laughs> game he doesn't cater. So. <laughs> I mean, they had desserts and everything up there. We had, uh, oh, banana cream pie one time. Cook, and we have they have it all up there. That by far is the best booth in the area. Without a by doubt. Way, by the way, I am not one of those media guys that sit in the press box. No, I'm not on the field. I've been on the field for twenty some years, and they'll have to drag my corpse off the sideline before they get me to go upstairs. The only time I go upstairs, Joe, is the state championship games when I'm kind of limited to what I can do. I could still go on the field, but I'm not going to lie. That time of the year, I don't want to freeze for four straight games out there. So it's the only time I go upstairs. Otherwise, I'm on the sidelines. Well, hopefully uh, next week, wherever we're at, that it's going to be a lot drier than it was the last game we did, for yeah. sure. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> don't even get into it. I don't even want to get into it with that. Um, I do have my first games figured out. Okay. The premium side knows where I'm going. Okay. Um. I'm going to wind up 
Friday night, um, Fenwick at Naz. Ah. Uh, Naz, to me, is one of the most intriguing stories this year because of the fact that they had a bunch of kids transfer out and then a bunch of kids transfer in, and they still might be as, as good as they've been. So I find that very interesting. And then Fenwick, as I keep telling you, Joe, they're loaded. They're loaded. They're going to be really good this year. And, and the scary thing is they're going to be equally as good in the fall. So, How did the uh, McCarthy – I saw him play one game that was on one of the nationals. How did he finish up at IMG? Uh, he was the national player of the year. He was? Okay. Yeah, he did okay. I guess he did okay, yeah. He did okay, and they won the national high school championship. So uh, okay. Did yeah. okay. Pretty Jake. good. Pretty good. He's up in Michigan now. So. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and then that Saturday I'm still putting together, I mentioned to you the 9 a.m. game. Mm-hmm. Definitely going to do that because us old people get up early, so it's not a yes, we do. So yeah. just getting up a normal time I would every day anyway. <laughs> um, and then I'll pick up an afternoon game. It could be, um, believe it or not, Sacred Heart. This happened early in the week. Sacred Heart Griffin – had I believe Decatur Eisenhower cancel on them week one, so they had an opening. So they're playing Kankakee in Kankakee. Oh wow! And Kankakee's been pretty good the last couple of years, and they were supposed to be good this year. And then I mean, anytime I get a chance to see Sacred Heart up here, I'll go watch them. So yeah, great um, game So that'll be it'll be the, that one. But it's interesting because the DuPage Valley is playing a lot of Saturday games early this year. Um, so there's some conferences that are very Saturday focused, and I think they're one of them. So there are going to be options besides Glenbard West and Loyola this year, yep. with the spring schedule. Oh, which yeah. I'm excited about. But the goal, as I told you very early on, for me, the goal with the schedule is going to be I am going to get out of Chicagoland on Fridays. I am going to travel. It's just if, if I'm going by rule of thumb and best game. Week one, I'm staying in Chicago land, with the exception of that Saturday game yeah. that I might go see. But I will be leaving Chicago land, Joe. Well, it's about time. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was it was it was good. I, I had good football reasons to do, or good reasons to do it with NBC Sports Chicago, and I hope they call me back in the fall and would love to do things with them again. But obviously, nothing's going to happen right. with them in the spring, the way things are, and and we'll see what happens with them. Um, that's gonna be the way with media. We've talked about it before too. It's um, you're not gonna see a lot of increased coverage at all. Right. Um, I don't know what the stringer situation is gonna be with a lot of these newspapers. I haven't really talked to too many of them. Um, but I would not expect a ton of heavy coverage. Right. You might struggle unless you're on Twitter. You might struggle finding scores from time to time. Right. Well, I appreciate you. Hanging, I appreciate you hanging around because I, you allow me to tag along sometimes when I ask. Sure, and that's I. Yeah. I enjoy watching the games too. The more, the merrier. So, <laughs> um, you know, and then the other thing with scheduling um, Easter throws a wrench in a lot of it. That week, ton of Thursday games, and then a ton of Saturday games. So, right which I find it weird with the Saturdays, I, I would think once you kind of, if you had to figure it out, once you kind of rather play on Thursday and then just be done for the whole weekend. Right. And is the Catholic league playing on Sundays and all? Oh, that's a good question. Hang on. I'll look. That might be a Thursday one. Well, um, not on Easter, of course, but I mean, over, other than Easter, I, you know, cause Sunday was, they used to play on Sundays a long, a long time ago. Oh yeah. Fenwick, Fenwick used to play like every Sunday. Right. Um, because when the bears are really bad and that was usually most of the time, um, <laughs> you could, I mean, most of the time, all the yeah. time, especially back then though, they were bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to guess is, is April is, uh, Easter the fourth. Yes. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So no, well, there's some, it's weird. There are some teams playing that Friday. Yeah, there's there's a lot of teams. Or actually, no, they're either playing Thursday or Saturday. Okay. So 
So like the see like Jolie Catholic is playing that Thursday, hosting Ignatius. So see, Joe, that's a good thing we moved to because yeah. we won't have we won't get our showcase. Great idea, yeah. Um yeah, so it's either gonna be it's either gonna be yeah, that Thursday or Saturday. Like Brother Rice is playing Loyola on that Thursday at four o'clock. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I guess it's a before sundown deal, I guess. So yeah. So there you go. Adding to the strangeness of everything. I have a comment, Edge, about what the IHSA came out as far as with spring sports. Being oh, yeah. Sport. Yeah, I forgot. Bring that I, up. I, right. As we kind of rip them <laughs> during the course of the entire year, I give them some credit here, some kudos, because of the fact that they came out and said, hey, you know, we decided we're going to have state championships. And I thought it was a great idea because of the fact of the spring sports losing everything, yep. everything last year. and. At first, it was just going to be one of those regional sectional things, which you just shake your head at. But they came out and said, hey, we're going to, we're going to give it a go and see what we're going to try. And I also, when you're read into it, too, the sports that are inside or like like lacrosse or and that's close contact like football. But yep. with um, with volleyball and badminton and stuff, they said we're going to right as of right now, we cannot have a state tournament, but we're going to put it in the books just in case the CDC or the Illinois Department of Health change their mind, we have it in place, which, I again, they stuck their neck out a little bit. I thought that that was the right thing to do. Yeah. And, it, it, I mean, even the spring, I mean, you might have some problems once the tournament starts, but once it starts, you're going to keep going no matter what. You're just going to have to forfeit a game. Well, you're, already, you're already seeing issues with football already. We haven't even started. So right. it's going to happen. There's going to – someone's going to come down with COVID. Um, it's already happened. Mount Carmel already yep. had an issue. Now, from what I've heard, it was non-athlete that got it. Again, that's kind of rumblings that I heard. Mount Carmel is going to be able to play week one. So, but it's going to continue. You're going to have that. It's going to happen with football too, but you're right. It's, you know, it's, it's encouraging that, they kind of kept their word and said, yep. Hey, we can do whatever we can to get those sports in. They're doing it. So I give them right. a lot of credit. I, I, I totally agree. Oh boy. See now the bribes are already begun, Joe. There you go. Yeah. Joe LaPointe, you know, my weakness, you know, it's a Cajun potato salad and fatties. Yeah, right. Oh, that stuff is so rich. Unbelievable. Oh, so hard to say no to. <laughs> it's good, Joe. It stays with you for like two days. Oh, I, I've been there. I know I've, I stopped there after we played uh, – Lamont's basketball team played one Christmas up there, and my nephew – one of my nephews lives up in DeKalb, and uh, he came to the game with me and went to Fatties after the game. Yep. And, um, Joe, as I talked about earlier, a lot of the DePage Valley games are Saturday. So that gives me more opportunity to maybe head out to a DeKalb. And, and the, as you all know, Joe, the Barbs are going to be good again this year. So yep. that very well could happen. And, uh, again, more on my schedule as uh, we move along. But, again, reminder, next week, Wednesday, we will continue this Wednesday. We will go from 6 to 8, 1340 WJOL for sure, possibly on the live video stream, possibly. But I know that guy, that guy will be with me. <laughs> and I'm hoping Evan or maybe Phil or one of the two will be running Get the band back together. We'll be back in the studios and we'll have plexiglass between us and we'll be in a bubble. They have to put a big <laughs> bubble on us and I have to make sure Joe punches in when we get in there. And, oh yeah. I got to do that. I got to get my, I got to get all set up again. Oh boy. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. I promise no difficulties. I don't want to uh, get yelled. Yep. Yeah. The whole season has been so silly. They need to play when the original season started. Uh, okay. Nino, so I'm not sure where you're going with that, but okay. <laughs> Does he mean last fall? Give it a go. Like we, we've talked about yeah, that. Uh, in the year. 
past this and start in the fall. But again, it's about the seniors. It's about getting yep. those seniors a chance to get out there. So I, I agree. We're going to leave that at that. All right, Joe, we're done. You can punch out now. So <laughs> All right. All right. For Joe Rodigero, I'm Edgy Tim. Remember, next Wednesday, 6 to 8, 1340, WJOL, um, we will be there. Um, I'm hoping we have a video stream. Stay tuned. Check the message board all week, and we'll give you updates. So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good rest of the week.